Hello YouTube, it's Matt here from RC Awesomeness. And in today's video we're going to be talking about LiPo batteries, lithium polymer battery types. So let me bring in the LiPo right now. Well that was quick. So this is an example of a LiPo battery. Let me just kind of move the camera. It's This is a Gen Zeiss. 5000 milliamp power 7.4 volt 40c 2s 1p what else hard case battery pack with plug in terminals now the first thing that i'm going to want to talk about is the different types of lipo batteries cuz there are many many types of lipo batteries you have hard case batteries you have soft case batteries um Really, you have plug-in terminal batteries, you have direct connect batteries, you have all kinds of different types of battery packs, of LiPo battery packs. This is just one type. It's a hard case plug-in terminal. So now, what we're actually going to do is build up a profile of this battery. We're going to build up a little profile of this battery pack. Just hold on a second. Okay, I'm back with my battery and with a piece of paper. So now we're actually going to build up a profile of this battery pack. So let's get started with the profile. So, the first thing we're going to write on this sheet of paper is that we're dealing with a LiPo battery. Next, you can see here 5000. Now, this is milliamp hours. The milliamp hours, the capacity of the battery. So here we're going to write uh, 5,000, small m, big A, small h. That's milliamp hour. Next we have a 7.4 volt. Four DC. I'll explain what that is in a minute. 2 S 1 P hard case and I think that's about it yes it is a 2s pack and another thing 5000 milliamp power it's a big number isn't it 5000 well 5000 milliamp power is actually 5.0 amp powers it's 5 amp powers why because a milliamp hour is one thousandth of an amp hour. Pretty straightforward, right? So this is a profile of our battery. Uh, here we have our little battery. Next, what we're going to talk about is the capacity. I'm going to explain the capacity. 5,000 milliamp hours or 5 amp hours. We're going to now talk with amp hours because it's just easier. So we, we're going to take 5 amp hours and let's say we want to know how much our motor, our electric motor, will draw out of this battery. And if the battery is capable of um, basically giving that amount of current. Our motor, let's say, is a... Uh, I know, 100 amp motor. Let me just draw a little line here just to make it easier for you to understand. Let me just move this up. So it's a 100 amp motor. Does this battery here give us 100 amps? Well, we're going to find out. It's a 5.0 amp hour 40C. As you can see up here, 40C. Now, what, a, what does that mean? Think of 5.0 as being the C. Okay? So what 40C means is you got to do 40 times 5. That's going to give you 200. 
What does 200 mean? 200 amps. So 40 times 5 is 200 amps. Because you got 5 amp powers times 40C is 200 amps. Our motor was 100 amps. So this 200 amp battery will give the motor the current that it needs. Does this mean that it's going to give the motor 200 amps and just flood the motor with 200 amps and kill the motor? No. If the motor is only drawing 100 amps, it's only going to give it 100 amps. It's not going to give it 200 amps. With this, you want to exceed it. If, if you have a 100 amp motor, you don't want to have a 100 amp light bulb. You want to have more than 100 amps. And I'll explain why later on. Now, the capacity, basically this 5,000 here, this 5,000 right here, means that if you run the battery at 5 amps, it's going to take exactly an hour to discharge it. And that's why it's 5 amp hour. It stands for hour, you know? So, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to explain the power. So basically how much power this battery has in it. So what you're going to want to do is get the 200 amps. Draw another little line here just to make life easier for us. Get the 200 amps and you want to multiply that by the voltage. 7.4 volts. And uh, this is the nominal voltage. It's 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 the voltage of the battery when it's about half charged. It's not always. It go it can go up to I think it's 8.2, not not 7.4, when it's fully charged. So 200 amps. Again, electric powered RCs and batteries require a lot of math. That's what's that's what this is all about. So 200 times 7.4, 1,480. Now. This, what does this mean? This is the power. Okay? So, uh, I don't really have any space here. The power of the battery is 1,480. Now, you measure power in watts. So, as we measure voltage in volts, we measure power in watts. How do you write that? W. So it's 1480 watts. That's the power of the battery. You don't really need to know this. I'm just kind of explaining it to you. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the characteristics of discharge of these uh, LiPo batteries because it is quite a bit different to nickel metal. So let me bring out another sheet of paper. So now this is how a nickel metal will discharge. Again, I'm, I am going to do a comparison video and a charging video of the two. But just a little bit of comparison. Here's what a nickel metal would behave. Let's say it's a 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride. Um, basically, this is time. And this is voltage. Okay, so this is time and this is voltage. The nickel metal will behave something like this. So, somewhere here it's actually going to be 7.2 volts. It may peak charge at over 8 volts, but it's going to drop down below 7 very, very quickly. And you can discharge it down to zero if you want to. LiPo, it's uh, quite a bit different to that. Voltage time on a LiPo. It's actually going to go something like this. Okay, you can see it's quite a bit different than the nickel metal. And that's because it has a very long nominal voltage here. 
The nickel metal has a very short nominal voltage. This has a very long nominal voltage at 7.4 volt because this is 7.4 volt lipo. This is 0 volts. This is 8.4 volts because that's the peak of a lipo when it's fully charged. If it's a 2S lipo, which it is because it's 7.4 volt. Anyway, um, you never want to go below. Three point zero volts per cell. What does that mean? This light bulb has two cells. That's what this two S means here. It means two cells in series. In series, it's made to double the voltage to increase the voltage. So it's. Let me move this paper a little bit. Three volts. Per cell. If we have two cells, that means you never want to go get the lipo go under six volts because it's you know three times two is six because it's three times two cells would be six. So you never want to get make it go under six volts. No. Do not, because then your charger will not be able to charge the battery anymore. It just, it will be able, it just won't allow you. It has a little safety belt and it won't let you allow, it won't allow you to charge if it's, I think, below 2.8 volts per cell. But that's really critical. Do not get it there. I am going to talk about safety in a minute, but do not discharge it below 3 volts per cell. Okay? So as you can see, uh, I kind of digressed. Here, you have 7.4 volt, and the nominal voltage is longer. So, it's gonna, your, your car, on a nickel metal, your car is gonna start off going fast, and then it's gonna slow down. On a LiPo, the car is gonna start going really fast, and then it's gonna go to about middle. It's gonna hold that, it's gonna hold it, and then it's gonna slow down until the end until you have to cut it off because you cannot let it drain again below 3 volts per cell alright now I'm gonna talk about safety lipos are dangerous it is easy to make them go wrong and have a catastrophic failure like an explosion or a fire or something like that now again as I said earlier never discharge it below 3 volts per cell that's rule number one let me actually get another sheet of paper here. We're just gonna use the one we used earlier. Because we're gonna waste a lot of paper. Alright. So ignore the writing on the back. This is just paper we used earlier. Rule number one. Never discharge below 3 volts per cell. Don't do that. Rule number 2. When storing keep at 3.8 volts per cell. At around 3.8 volts per cell. When you store light, you don't want to leave it uh, stored fully charged because it's gonna blow up and you don't want to leave it stored fully discharged because it's gonna blow up as well they're gonna start a puff if you do that they're, you're gonna lose a lot of power by being stupid so when you store it more than a day or two leave it at 3.8 volts per cell next rule number three use correct charging Equipment. You don't want to use a bad charger. You want to use a lipo compatible charger. So search on the web. Look at your local hobby shop. It's got to be a lipo compatible charger with a balancer. And in the lipo charging video is going to come a bit later. I'm going to show you what balancing means and just kind of teach you how to charge lipos. Number four. 
store plus charge in a safe area slash container. Now, you can use all kinds of things for this. You can use a ammo case, you can use a cinder block. Some people use lipo bags, which look a little bit like this. This is a lipo bag. Basically, you throw all your lipos inside. It's a Kevlar bag. It's, it can contain the flame if your lipos catch fire or something. You just gotta throw your lipo in there, close the bag up better than I did now, and you're safe. That's basically what you gotta do. And then, five. And the last thing, let me just it, use the proper connector. You don't want to use a crappy Tamiya or a Molex connector. You want to get something. You want to use something that's good, like a Dean's connector. This is a Dean's connector. This is how a Dean's connector looks like. And basically, with one of those plug-in terminals, you just gotta plug in the connectors into the battery and the balance connector and here's how it's gonna look like with the connector so you wanna use a good connector, you don't wanna use a crappy connector you really don't wanna do that it's really, it's not gonna help at all trust me when I'm saying this to you cause it's not gonna help at all if you do that so number five use good connectors another thing that's kind of into number five but not really use the correct male connector do not and I repeat do not plug do not use crocodile, cl crocodile clips to plug onto here don't use crocodile clips to plug onto it get a good male connector that plugs in there and you'll be good. Another thing that you do have to know. Now this is extremely dangerous. I do not recommend you to do this. This is just for demonstration purposes, but never do this. Is actually plug the connectors in. Then have the two clips hanging out like that because what you got here is something that is extremely dangerous because if these two connectors touch themselves you're gonna short out your battery causing it to blow up or just not work anymore you do not want that to happen you do not I'm just going to disconnect this as quick as I can because I don't want anything bad happening now. Come on, get off, get off, get off, please. There you go. Now, now that I've disconnected and disconnected them, I can touch them, nothing will happen. But when they're plugged into the battery, you don't want that to happen. So, six. Don't. Let's say improvise improvise or touch positive to negative connectors never do that so basically guys this is all that you need to know about these batteries, there's really not a lot. I'm gonna show you how to balance the batteries in the next video, how to charge them. So, for now, goodbye, take care.